Honorable Chairman Dr. Atre, ladies and gents, good afternoon to all of you. Aerospace products and systems are widely configurable, covering many technologies and fields. These include communications, navigation, airspace, surveillance, flight control and air traffic management, management of payloads and in-flight information. In addition to air vehicle, engine and the flight management, many aerospace products, whether they are airborne or ground-based, are complex and require accurate design and vigorous certification to meet the highest reliability. The challenges in the field of aerospace products are manifold and range are manifold. The challenges in the field of aerospace products are manifold and range from design, manufacture, testing, integration, qualification, certification, deployment, and maintenance. These challenges are further compounded by various performance management issues. In order to meet the price and performance challenges, increasing level of technologies must be brought into the products. To give a few examples, in the case of Avionix aircraft systems, design systems are replacing analog systems as in glass cockpits. Software is replacing hardware in single hardware is being used for the different platform after porting different software. Multifunction displays are replacing instruments and control. Integrated systems are replacing standalone systems. Automation is replacing manual operations. With tighter program funding and the compressed schedules, it is increasingly required to rely more on commercial off-the-shelf course equipment and systems. Outsourcing of such system, in these cases, the subsystem requirements are defined and the vendor delivers the subsystems as per requirements, enabling us to integrate, test, and certify the systems in the aircraft. If all goes well, we meet the program cost and schedule objective and deliver the fully operational, certified, oblique qualified product on schedule. However, when avionics aircraft systems, engineering and integration tasks are distributed among several different subcontractors in a cost competitive or scope limited format, there is a risk of loss in the cross-section synergism resulting in costly time-consuming system integration problems later in the program. System implementation becomes increasingly expensive and time-consuming in the following scenario where Program management is not mature and professional. System engineering is not through and complete. Courts equipment and systems are not as plug and play as planned, making integration much more difficult, time consuming and costly. System hardware, oblique software integration problems are difficult to isolate and solve, especially those that are cross system and are cross functional. Subsystem providers are not supportive during the problem situations, problems do not get fixed. Redesign becomes the only alternative to an unsatisfactory system design. Majority of the avionics products happen to suffer due to one or more of the above problems. Avionics oblique aircraft system implementation is extremely difficult and its outcome is based on many different factors but successful implementation is possible if right things are done at the right time in the right manner. Challenges in the development of avionic system, for example, the flight control system. Electronic control systems are being used in commercial aviation for more than 40 years. The use of electronic systems to manipulate the hydraulic control used by fly-by-wire technique started the revolution on the flight control. Initially, digital computers controlled the flight control system. Subsequently, a new standard of fly-by-wire has been defined in the flight control law and the system integration areas. The fly-by-wire, primarily flight control, glass cockpits, etc., have created the greater challenges in the technological and the program management arenas from system requirement analysis down to reviews. The requirement analysis 
In general, a top-down approach is followed from high-level requirement to specific design decisions, which later led to low-level requirements and design specifications. Involvement of potential customers in defining top-level design requirements and throughout the process of refinement is vital in freezing the requirement. Requirements capture. Customers top-level requirements and lessons learned from other programs need to be captured in the design requirement and objectives. The preliminary architect usually meet the design requirement and provide the best compromise in terms of cost, weight and safety. However, the requirements undergo several revisions and evolve in an iterative manner. During the development phase, it is desirable to use techniques like rapid prototyping and modeling to enable the system engineering to evaluate requirement associated with each system. As a result, the requirements will be more stable during integration, testing, and development cycle times can be reduced. Requirements allocation. With the top level requirements and preliminary architect defined, the next step is to develop low level system requirement of various line replaceable units. Separate teams can be responsible for evolving the corresponding detail requirements for different areas. As the detail requirement evolves, the system and the component level requirement need to be captured in the system requirements and objective documents. The various design requirements, objective, philosophies, definitions, and the design decision for the system are part of these documents. System functionality performance, availability, safe, safety, separation, crew operation, and maintenance issues are also needed to be addressed in these requirements documents. Requirements validation. While evolving the requirements, there is also a need for requirements validation before equipment is built. Issue primarily to be addressed by the validation processes are the need for requirement, correctness of the requirement, compatibility with the other requirements, and whether the product when built to the requirement would accomplish what was intended. Reviews. Understandability, testability, maintainability costs are lessons learned play a substantial part in the process. A continuous feedback need to be provided from all validation activities through problems report and the system issues. During formal reviews, representative from the user certification agencies, manufacturers, suppliers, interfacing airplane oblique system groups, and peers from the other airplane program have to be included at various stages. The major review activity includes the system design reviews called STR, system preliminary design review PDR, and the system critical design reviews CDR, which shall be completed in that order. A review of later changes has to be accomplished by a requirements review board comprising of all groups affected by the requirement and appropriate project managers. Redundancy. With a particular component fails totally or provide erratic performance, a faulty tolerance system generally uses both hardware and software type of fault tolerances and provides the capability for automatic dynamic reconfiguration of the system. In order to deal with such situation, different level of redundancy, that is the dual, triple, or quad, shall be provided for depending on the level of criticality and the allowable profitability of failure. This redundancy extends to all hardware elements such as processors, sensors, actuators, data buses, and also the software. Software challenges. Companies developing avionics software face a huge challenge. On one hand, safety is not an option, but a requirement of paramount importance. This makes the development of such systems very expensive. On the other hand, the growing complexity in these systems increases the cost and development time to a level that conflicts with business constraints such as time to market and competitiveness. Also, the functional requirement of software increases year after year. The rapid changes and increases in the functional integration requirement such as automation to reduce the pilot workload, highly portable and the common GUI, etc., have resulted in increase in software size and the complexity. Functions that were completely isolated now 
communicate with each other using the shared computing and data bus resources with a mix of new and legacy software. Experience shows that such interconnections between traditionally unrelated or independent functions have resulted in more complexities, especially during failures. Thus, stringent certification and qualification controls with strong verification and validation processes are required to increase the reliability of the airborne system. The challenge is to provide affordable, maintainable, highly integrative software within the budget and delivery constraints. Other challenges include the system-specific architecture, high turnout in defense software workforce, cost-related issues, etc. Cultural challenges. Software development verification and validation culture presents additional implementations such as through life cycle involvement and resultant oversight compounded by the situation of approved processes lagging technology, limited synergy and the courts industry. To leverage courts technology, multi-system developer must establish boundaries of stability to ensure that the system functionality means stable for many years. Changes forced by obsolescence are contained. Requalification is kept to minimum as it is too expensive to do often. Courts market appears to be meeting the immediate requirements, however, resulting in high system turnover rates, system being fielded with bugs, clash between deadline-driven culture versus getting it exactly right culture. New areas of development the development of the airborne system possesses challenges of its own in the upcoming areas. For example, aerostate is a new emerging area in aerospace, which while offering exciting opportunities for innovative and complex designs, also provides several challenges for integrating simultaneously multiple payloads like radars, alint, comment, EO sensors, radio relay, etc. on a single aerostate platform. The integration challenges are stability of the aerostat system, interoperability of the various onboard payloads, size and weight management, environment, power management, mechanical interface, lightning protection, EMI, RFI, thermal management, safety and availability. Other challenges, with continuous changes in technologies, maintaining systems for several years call for effective technology management to address obsolescence. The long-term maintenance and obsolescence issues can be addressed by one or more of the following methods. Substitution, product improvement, the life extension, and upgradation. Also, one of the other major challenges would be to collaboratively address various technology issues. The technologies of aerospace products are so diverse that it would be quite impossible for any single entity to provide complex solutions. The major global aerospace industries may forge international collaborations and alliances to come up with innovative, cost-effective solutions. The ultimate goal is to ensure that aerospace industries will be eventually be competent enough to handle aerospace-grade technology and to successfully meet challenges not only from design to development, but also throughout the life cycle of the products and the systems. Thank you very much.